You see what I'm, you see what I mean though? Okay, why do we do this? Why do we split, not, uh, split them off and why do we like to split them in diagonal? Some of, some of them are front and back. Front two are uh, controlled by one piston, the back two are controlled by the other piston. Why do we do that? Why do we split the system? Thank you. If this line ruptures, okay, and you got gushing brake fluid there, guess what? You, uh, you, you're losing brake, braking power on the right rear and left front, but you still have braking power from the right front and left rear. That way you balance it out, okay? What if we split them front and back? Let's say if, if front ones go out, the back one will grab, and guess what happens? The, the back end of the car will come to the front. You can have a fat, fatal wreck. Make sense? Or vice versa. Vice versa. If you have the br back braking, if you lose the back braking, and you have the front still, you may flip the car just by coming to a nose, nose dive, basically. You know? That's why we split the system, and we split them in usually diagonally. Some of the Europeans, again, we have that exception in automotive, always. There's an exception. Some of the Europeans, they do split them front and back, okay? And they have some electronic backup braking to help that out. Of course, these are very expensive cars that we're talking about, okay? Make sense? All right. Most of the rear engine cars, they do that because of the weight issues, okay? That's another... Uh, um, Okay, let's turn it on. All right. Mandated by the federal government allows braking reserve in case of external leak. Okay? In case of a brake failure, either one of the uh, uh, lines, okay? Uh, at least you've got one piston that's going to bring you to a kind of safe stop. Okay? It's not complete braking, but it's okay braking, I guess. Okay? Uh, uh, two design, front and rear split, we just talked about it, and a diagonal split, okay? Diagonal split is the one that I showed you right here, okay? If you open up a master cylinder, if you take, the, take one apart, you will see two pistons in there, two different pieces of, two, two, two pistons just like this, okay? This would be the back, back piston and this would be the front piston, okay? The push rod is pushing both of them at the same time though, okay? With the same amount of uh, 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 pressure. Make sense? Okay. That's a split system right there. Okay? See, you have, uh, uh, um, in this reservoir, you have two chambers. One, one chamber for one piston, the other chamber is for the other piston. Okay? Can we move on? Okay? Uh, um, usually, usually, with the help of Proportioning valve and metering valve, the manufacturers, they split the system depending on the weight and the design of the vehicle. Most of the braking is done with the front brakes and very less braking is done with the rear brakes, okay? Usually 70-30 or 60-40, okay? 70% of the braking is done by the front brakes and 30% is done by the rear brakes. Why is that? Why is that? Because of the weight. When you think about it, when you come to a stop, what happens to the car? It nose dives in the front, right? Most of the weight moves to the front. Okay? If whatever is heavier needs to be stopped first, right? Needs to be stopped quickly. Make sense? So if it nose dives on you, you need most of the braking done in the front, then the rear. Okay? But which brakes are applied first, front or the rear. There's a little lag between the front braking and the rear braking, okay? One of them's delayed, which one is it? Rear, okay. Why, why rear? What do you think? Think about when you, when you first started riding a bicycle. How many of you rode a bicycle? I did, a lot, okay. Uh, Kyle probably didn't, and Clint didn't. Uh, um, okay, still riding a bike, right? Okay, uh, which one do you, uh, which brake do you apply first? Front or the rear? Rear, why is that? You don't want to flip over. Exactly. You don't want to flip the car over either. 
That's why, okay? That is done by, that is done by metering valve, okay? Metering valve, it meters the pressure, okay? It delays the pressure to the front brakes just like a split of a split of a second. It's not a whole lot of time, okay? Metering valve delays the pressure to the front brakes. It apply, lets the pressure go to the back, okay? Then the front, okay? So just to... Uh, almost everything, almost everything, okay? Uh, um, basically, you know, and uh, yes, rears are only assisting the fronts, okay? Split hydraulic system, uh, diagonal split, well, we just talked about it. Um, this is the design that is used most com commonly on the late models because of disc, they want to have one disc, one drum. Okay, so because of the disc and drum application, but now we're going almost every car, every new car that's coming out, hardly any of them have uh, um, disc in the in the rear. I mean, drum in the rear. All of them have all the way around disc. Was that? It's optional for the disc in the back. Drum in the back, right? Well. Why would you want to have drums, though? When you, pull when you pull in trailers. When you pull in trailers, they come in handy, OK? Uh, uh, but if you're not pulling anything, man, you might as well have desks because they're easier, easier to maintain, OK? Less moving mechanical parts, no springs, no springs at all. Uh, and also, your parking brake system is a lot simpler than in the drum brakes, OK? Dual piston master cylinders, we talked about it. Uh, um, primary piston is usually the, the bigger piston, which is in the, uh, towards the back, back end. When I say towards the back end, it's towards the firewall. Okay? That's the primary. Secondary is the, towards the front. Usually the secondary is the one that is uh, uh, smaller in diameter. Okay? That's what we're talking about. Um, you can see the, see the picture here. See how big the, the primary piston is versus the secondary piston. Okay, these are two different split systems. And again, you have two different reservoirs for this. Okay? Well, I may you may prove me wrong when it comes to some of the imports. They all have one reservoir regardless of what. Because they have smaller braking systems. Okay. All right. Um, again, this is a uh, uh, basically a uh, exploded view of a master cylinder with the dual system, okay? All right. Um, let's talk a little bit about how the, how the master cylinder uh, 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 pushes the fluid out of the master cylinder, okay? You got your por uh, ports on the top, okay? You got a replenishing port. You got a vent port, okay? And what do, does the job over here is the cup seals. These cup seals, these cup seals add, act like sque squeegees on these uh, uh, inside the bore. Okay. Uh, uh, what happens is when you when you squeegee water in the drain, what are you trying to do? You're trying to seal the floor with the rubber, you know, blade on the squeegee, right? Trying to push everything out. If you don't squeeze, you know. If you don't put any pressure on it, just basically barely walk with the ones that we have over here, you will not, you know, you will not push any water. You'll leave a lot of water behind. Okay? We'll apply that principle to this and talk about what could be what could go bad on a master cylinder. Okay? It's got it's very crucial for those cup seals to be, you know, tight against the uh, 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 walls of the master cylinder, the bore of the master cylinder. Okay? If there's anything, any fluid that goes past behind the seals, guess what, what we call that? Master cylinder is bypassing. Okay? Isn't it bypassing? Isn't the master cylinder bypassing the uh, brake fluid behind the seals? If the seals are not able to seal this, 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 this area very good, the fluid is going to get to the back side of the piston and is going to go back in the replenishing port, go back in the... Uh, uh, um, Reservoir. That means 
your, your master cylinder is bypassing. It's not doing its job. That's when you get a low brake pedal, okay? That's when you get a low brake pedal and kind of a spongy brake pedal, okay? These seals can go back bad over the time. How? Contamination in the brake fluid. And by the way, how often should you replace the brake fluid? How often should you flush the brake fluid? Let's, let's say that. Let, just like you, you, uh, you replace the oil uh, in the engine, how often should you replace brake fluid? Two years, 24,000 miles, or every, every time you do a brake job. That's a good, good, safe way to say that. What I, I say is living in Texas, especially in East Texas, with so much moisture in the air, okay, remember that, that cover on top of the master cylinder reservoir, it's not, you know, 100% seal proof, okay, 100%, uh, you know, uh, moisture proof, I should say. Okay, even though most of the ma master renders have that rubber seal inside, okay, even then it's sucking in moisture. Okay, that moisture over the time gets on the rubber seals and breaks those rubber seals because mo water and rubber, water will break down rubber, right? Okay, so over the time, what happens is that fluids start getting contaminated, kind of dark in color. Okay, you start seeing some really granules of uh, uh, black particles in the, in, the, in the reservoir. Am I right or wrong? You've seen some of the brake fluid pretty, pretty black and nasty, right? Well, it's pretty, pretty bad. That's, that's, that's when you replace a lot of parts. Okay? Okay. How do you get all the fluid out of it? Very good question. Very good question. How do you get, out, get all the fluid out? What I do, I take the cap off, you know, turkey baster, Anybody use turkey baster? Thanksgiving's around the corner, okay? Keep one in your toolbox, okay? Buy one, even though none of you probably bake a turkey. I won't either, uh, uh, but I'll just buy it. <laughs> and uh, um, buy a turkey baster, put it in your toolbox. What you do is you take the cap off, you suck out all the fluid, and put it in a pan. Just squeeze it out in the pan as much as you can, okay? As much as you can, and remove the filter Remove the filter and wash it out with brake parts cleaner, okay? Alcohol-based brake parts cleaner, not water, okay? Wi wash it out and then put the screen back in and then pour in new fluid, okay? Pour in new fluid and basically do a m manual bleed. So what you're going to do, you're going to push all that dirty fluid out and replace it with clean fluid that you just put in the reservoir, you know? You're just flushing it out. Make sense? That's how you do it, simple as that. You don't need any uh, special machinery or anything like that. You just make sure you suck all the old brake fluid out, put new one in, and bleed the brakes. Un and how, how long do you bleed the brakes in that case? Until you, see, until you see clear coming out of the bleeder valve, okay? Until you see cle clear coming out of the bleeder valve. That's, that's when you stop, okay? All right. Um, same thing we just talked about. Um, <laughs> was that? Okay, twig, twig, quick take up master cylinders. Okay, uh, um, usually used on all all disc brakes. Okay, because disc brakes they don't need that much lag time. Okay, it needs to be applied really quickly. Chevy started this long time ago, and uh, everybody else took, took over it, uh, basically. This is a quick take up mass, uh, a master cylinder. What, they, what it is, it's, uh, it's a check valve in there, and uh, it pushes, it gushes, basically as soon as you apply the brake, uh, apply the brake pedal, 